Hi Oliver. Uh, so you've asked what happens uh, if you have two objects that are moving away from each other at some fraction, large fraction of the speed of light. How do you actually calculate what their velocity is relative to each other? Um, so uh, the specific question you asked was what happens if they say 60% of the speed of light? Do you find that if you have two objects moving 60% of the speed of light away from each other relative to some observer who is, uh, you know, sees them both moving in equal speeds. Uh, does that mean that relative to, say, somebody in one object, the other one is moving 120% of the speed of light away from him? Um, it turns out the answer is no, uh, but the reason is basically because the intuitions that we have are built up around very slow things. So this is how it's called non-relativistic physics, uh, or Galilean physics, um, but we're used to the notion that if you want to add velocities, you just add them together. So if I uh, throw two balls in different directions, I'd expect that one ball uh, is moving you know, twice as fast relative to the other one. So this would give you the answer that if you had two objects moving at 60% of the speed of light away from each other, you know, you know re relative to some observer in the middle, then uh, one would be moving at 120% the speed of light relative to the other. But unfortunately this doesn't actually work. It turns out that our intuition breaks down when you get close to the speed of light. Um, that's because the speed of light has the kind of special property that has to be the same for observers uh, regardless of how fast they're going. So if you try and formulate how you add velocities, take into account that the speed of light always has to be the same, it turns out you have to use a different formula. So I'm just going to kind of show it on the screen here. Uh, and what you can see is that no matter how fast these objects are going, uh, they never get up to the speed of light, and the relative dis difference never exceeds the speed of light. So when you actually put through this uh, properly, what you find is that they're moving about 88% uh, of the speed of light. So they're going very, very fast, but it's nowhere near the kind of change that you would expect just based on your kind of normal day-to-day -day intuition. Um, so, I mean, the fact that this happens is very deep and it's very meaningful about the world, but it's just kind of the start of learning that the, the rules that we get used to are kind of only special cases. So we're used to things that are very slow and pretty big, and it turns out that the world is a lot stranger when you get to more extreme situations, you know, when things are moving very quickly, or you go down to the physics of the very small, the data way intuitions we've built up just don't really apply anymore. Um, so hopefully this gives you an idea about how things actually uh, are combined or how relative velocities work at these very high speeds.